With us, Professor Richard Wolf, the economist, co-founder of democracyatwork.info, the author of numerous books, including his most recent, The Sickness Is the System, When Capitalism Fails to Save Us from Pandemics or Itself, also available as an e-book. He's also the uh, host of the Economic Update with Professor Richard Wolf right here on Free Speech TV, uh, democracyatwork.info, Prof Wolf, P-R-O-F, Wolf with two Fs on Twitter. Uh, Professor Wolf, uh, welcome back to the program. The, the, um, the American Inflation Act, uh, which is provide, uh, uh, along with the CHIPS Act and, uh, Act and along with the uh, uh, bipartisan infrastructure bill, um, all of them basically large subsidy programs, a lot of it through tax uh, breaks and things like that, are causing just a, an explosion of announcements from companies, Honda, LG Energy, General Motors, Ford, Toyota, um, uh, let's see, uh, uh, the list just goes on and on, Corning, uh, Micron, Qualcomm, they're all building like literally multi-billion dollar factories, thousands of jobs all across the United States. Um, it, this seems, broadly speaking, like a good thing and that, uh, you know, bringing jobs back home or building jobs here would be a good thing, although we still haven't changed our tariff policies or our trade policies in any consequential way. So. There's an awful lot of manufacturing still being done, you know, in China, which is threatening to go to war with us over Taiwan. I, I'm curious your thoughts on all this. And also uh, over at CEPR, they just had a piece uh, that they just published about uh, how uh, the unemployment claims are starting to inch back up again. Uh, it looks like maybe Jerome Powell's efforts to uh, induce a recession are, are working. What are your thoughts on, on this, you know, kind of globally on this whole, whole larger issue here? And do you want to break that down into pieces? Okay, yeah, let me, uh, and let me tell you that my theme, which I hope doesn't depress folks, is enormous grain of salt here. I mean, lots of skepticism. Every one of the last seven or eight presidents of the United States, uh, either during his campaign or, or his or her campaign, or uh, once in office, has made grandiose promises about bringing uh, jobs back to the United States, bringing manufacturing jobs. Uh, and every one of those presidents presided uh, over exactly the opposite. In other words, what actually happened was a continuing decline of uh, manufacturing jobs and a continuing decline of good jobs. And by that, I mean jobs that have a uh, more than an average level of income and wage and salary, and more than the average level of benefits to go with it. So uh, lots of talk, uh, that talk is ratcheting up now. You're quite right, Tom. It's mostly about and from companies that are getting huge fat subsidies, tax breaks, incentive programs uh, to do exactly that. I don't want to minimize that there is a giving up of the globalist uh, image, the notion that the United States was the uh, advance guard of a free trade world and that we would globalize and we would all be better off. It was never the, uh, the truth. It was mostly hype. But there is an indication now that the United States uh, and Western Europe have switched their focus and are now going to do what they always do, but do it in a nationalistic way rather than in a globalized way, which is part of why the tariffs on China uh, haven't gone away. The second thing to understand here is that the most ambitious notion of how many jobs were created over the last year in this country uh, comes to about 350,000 jobs. And that's an impressive number. Uh, but the number that you ought to keep in mind is the amount of loss of jobs that are expected over the next two years just from the raising of interest rates uh, that Mr. Powell and the Federal Reserve are committed to. The estimates there run from two to five million. So rough wow. numbers, t yes, and that includes uh, you know all, all the major estimators. So that's 10 times the number of lost jobs compared to, to what the last year has uh, achieved in terms of jo uh, jobs here. It suggests that a government that was concerned with employment might be really better served taking the tens of billions of dollars in those three laws just passed that you referenced and, and developing them for a po program of public jobs 
or other kinds of work arrangements which would be much more important for the American people, given what has been promised to them by their own leaders, such as Mr. Powell and the obvious support he gets uh, from Mr. Biden. Look, here's the reality. Our unemployment numbers are low. But that's because we are paying lower wages than we have before. Look at this, just this last year. Average wage increase, 5%. Average price increase, between 8 and 9%. And that's a conservative estimate. That means that the real cost to companies has gone down for the labor force they sustain. They're able to raise their prices on average 8.5%, but they only have to pay their workers much less of an increase, 5%. That boosts the profits. And if you add to that whatever productivity gains they're getting from automation and technology and artificial intelligence, well, then it continues to be a banner year for profitability, which, by the way, all the statistics about U.S. corporate profits indicate. So I'm afraid my skepticism leads me to the notion, A, the number of jobs coming back is not what it is hyped up to be. Number two, other economic realities are close honing in on the American economy in a way that ought to make the government much less busy hyping than what it does do in subsidies to corporations and much busier doing something for the millions of people it is itself proposing to render uh, unemployed. Remember in his last speech uh, that Jerome Powell talked about the pain to American households that what he is doing will bring and how sorry he is that that is the case. Wow. I mean, you can be more than sorry if you're willing to give, you know, literally hundreds of billions to corporations for a fairly modest improvement while you don't give anything comparable to what you are bringing down on the heads of the working class. Well, then, you know, your earlier commentary on on people being upset and rightly so and going to the left and the right uh, rightly so in their desperate determination to try in some way to undo all of this. And here's a last point. If you bring jobs back to the United States, even with a decline in real wages in this country over the last 30 years, it's still the case that Americans get paid more than other parts of the world, which means if you bring your manufacturing here, you're going to have to price it higher because you're paying much higher wages. And that means you're going to be in competition with other countries that are not experiencing the price inflation that we are, whose prices are not rising. Let me leave you with one statistic. The inflation rate over the last few years, and including right now as I speak, in the People's Republic of China is 2%, not 8 to 9%. And the world is an economy that is looking around to buy wherever the prices are cheapest. And we are pricing ourselves out of the world economy in large part by the kinds of policies both private enterprises and the government are pursuing. Fascinating. Professor Richard Wolf, uh, Democracy at Work Info, Prof Wolf over on Twitter. Professor Wolf, thank you so much for dropping by. My pleasure. Thank you, Tom. Always great talking with you.